What follows is yours for free, but do have a look at all the other things we do on patreon.com slash word in your ear. And now, on with the show. Word in your attic, a Zoom with a view. Another word in your attic. And an old pal of ours who used to be the head of press for Epic and various other labels when we worked in magazines. And he was the one we'd ring if we wanted Joni Mitchell or Wham or the Beach Boys or Michael Jackson and, and countless others. Very nice to see you again, Jonathan Morris. How are you? I'm very well, and it's lovely to see you both. I'm very honoured that you've asked me to do this. Not at all. And so, where, whereabouts are you? So, so I'm, I'm, um, I live in in Wimbledon in SW19. Oh right. I've got, I've got a bit of a quiz question for you. I right. want to ask you what is a local. What do you think is a local landmark? Sadly, it's not mentioned in our mate Pete Frame's great book, which is actually wow. quite a surprise. Oh right. Yes, very near to me. Is is the cover of an album? Oh, I tell you what it is, and I'm going to tell you. I can even I can, if I reach Wouldn't over here, Sandy Denny. If no. I reach over here in groups F, it's Fairport Convention. It's Fairport Convention. Oh, it's a right. heartbreak. It is. It's it's right. Right. I'm I'm very impressed. Oh, good, good. I'm very so, we so both got the, it. In the background there, um, you know, yep. you've got Sandy Denny's parents in the front. In the background yep. there, Mary's Church, um, where where my daughter was married. Um, and actually, I, I had to when in my in my speech, when I gave her away, I had to t- tell a little man, Michael Jackson anecdote, which hopefully we'll get on to, which hopefully we'll get on to uh, later. All right. You so, can always tell it now. And, <laughs> it's up to you. No, let's keep. I, let's get. No, I, no, fine. Honestly, well, well, look, let's, where let's, we traditionally a start. Of, a bit. Well, I think we should probably start at the beginning. Go on. Um, my my. Um, First, I've, I've now, my, I now can't find where I put my first singles. But but my 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 the first sort of song I got um, when I was six or seven was "Alone" by Petula Clark. I don't oh, know. If you know it. Alone, good. Why should I be alone? And actually, if you listen to it now, as I did preparing for this, I think it kind of almost predates the "Yeah Yeah Yeah." Oh, she loves you. I think that if you play it again, there's a lot of yeah, yeah, yeahs in there. Um, but 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 I'll, I'll leave I'll leave that to greater great greater critics than me. <laughs> um, and you know, I think one's life becomes a bit of a collection of of of, of sort of songs. And but you really there comes a point when you sort of start living 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 the charts. Um, I, I, I was sort of. Um, incarcerated in a boarding school for 10 years and I have to say I mean probably one of the best some of the best moments I've ever had on this planet a listening on a crystal set do we all remember mm. crystal sets an actual sure. crystal a, set John a little crystal wireless set after lights out in my prep school listening to Radio Luxembourg oh yes yes knowing that if I was going to get caught, I'd get beaten with a gym shoe. And trust me, that hurts. So for me, music sort of always S- took such on... Such a commitment. That's, that's brilliant. Well, I, you know, there was this world out there. You know, yeah. I'm 12, 13, and there's this world out there that I just cannot, I sort of cannot understand. But it's yeah. just so exciting. Um, so in a way... Um, I, I the first single I buy is um, is 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 Hippy Hippy Shake by the Swinging Blue Jeans. Blue Jeans. I'm yeah. sort of living. I begin to live the charts in November in November nineteen in November nineteen sixty three, um, and and I I fall passionately in love with Dusty Springfield. Right. Now, my brother. Fought, How old would you be at this time then, roughly? I, I was, I, I was, I, I was thirteen. Yeah, I'm twelve going on, th- go, going yeah, yeah. on thirteen. Now, fortunately, my brother has bought. I only want to be with you, but I've bought just one look, and he became a massive Hollies fan and still is. So we actually swapped. I only want to be with you. His only. I only want to be with you. With my just one look, and then Dusty sat. I, I, here are my fan club letters. Oh, so I've got all those there. And but my real, real sadness is that I gave. Um, I gave. Um, uh, when when um, when this fantastic box set came out, I gave a lot of artifacts to that. In fact, you can see my fan club card in the artwork oh really fantastic but i never got it back i was number five nine eight 
And I just, that, to me, Dusty was um, just... You so know, you've the, got the letters that you sent to the fan club or the, or the letters the fan no, club sent the letters to you? That used to come, they're the letters that What was the address, to... Jonathan? Can you remember the address yeah. of the of the Dusty Preview fan club? Because it was probably just Acacia Avenue, you know... No, 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 no. No? Right. Funnily enough, one of the one of the um, one of the assistants lived very, very nearby. Here we go. President and Secretary Patricia Barnett, fifteen A Lightfoot Road, Hornsey, London N A. Telephone F I T. I suppose that's Fitzroy. Fitzroy two seven six two. That's, that's wonderful. The, the first that's... one. The first one that I grabbed. I mean, how Patricia great Barnett. That? That's you know, fantastic. I, Let's hope she's watching. <laughs> I was a member of the fan club, and of course, I mean the hours, the uh, hours, yeah, know, yeah, the yeah, hours yeah. we've I've spent looking at this this lustrous picture. Um, I, I mean, I I, I shuddered. I Have you shuddered. got her autograph? Uh, again I, do you know i'm pretty i'm pretty good at keeping stuff i did have her autograph sent by the fan club but i i, I just got lost in the passage yeah time. but now if you remember you know i worked at at, at at cbs as you've referenced her last album her last album came out on columbia yeah a, a very fine love now this that, oh, oh my oh, lord! Isn't that isn't that just a fabulous? That's photo? a terrific Very picture. Um, so so at that point, I'm showing her my lovely pink fan club card. Yeah. Um. And and it just it's just such a lovely photo. But but and but my I have a little dusty story because on that album, it was a duet. You may remember it with Daryl Hall called Yeah. Where, wherever would I be? So 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 the guy that was managing director of Columbia at the time. <laughs> said to me, look, Daryl Hall is coming into the studio that CBS had up in Whitfield Street. Um, you know, would you like to come up? And I'd met Dusty, you know, quite a, quite a few times. And um, so we go up, we go up, to the we go up to the studio and there's, there's Daryl there waiting. And Dusty comes in and they chit and chat and he's just about to lay down his vocals. Um, and, you know, Dusty's got Vicky Wickham with her. And um, they all say their goodbyes and they, they, they sort of shut the door of the studio and um, and then Dusty comes back into the studio and in all seriousness looks at Daryl Hall and says, you better not fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, she must but she was, she, I just, you know, I look, I was just, I was passionately in, in, in love. And, you know, we all know that, that, that you know, the, 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 the sort of chemistry of sex and puberty and pop, you know, all go together. And I do yeah. think going back is probably, you know, the, you know the, 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 the greatest single of all time. I don't know whether I reverse engineer that because I love Dusty so much, but that, that sort of wistful yearning that you get in going back and that lovely line, I mean, which works. Let everyone debate the true reality. I mean, that's what a line, what a yeah. line in a pop mm. song. I yeah. mean, you know, get it, get a bit of philosophizing in there. But it's just I think it's a, it's 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 a... and nearly every Dusty song has the same theme, which is abandoned girl mourning. Yes. We'll take yes. him back, even though he's gone off with somebody else, you know, so uh, hard to uh, justify these days. <laughs> so who did you move on to from Dusty's Brave Well, clearly well, you never, I you never left then, left so, that. so I don't know if I want to make a prat of myself. There's me and my Scott Walker phase. That's, oh, that's good. Well, that's, that's really who, good. Who, who, who I love. But um, yeah. Then, but then I sort of, you know, I, I, people say to me, what kind of music do you like? And, and I sort of did get into guitars. I think, you know, I think it's that bit when the beat, when a sort of beat boom and everyone starts taking drugs and it all goes a bit wonky. That's that's sort of what I really love. I'm not sure quite how I describe that picture, but I've, I've got my elephant chords on. It's my mod. Beer. I tell, you that, my, I, I yes, tell you what that is, of, Jonathan. That's your Paul Jones. There. That's your Paul but, but Jones. I've got, I've got a military jacket on that I bought in Carnaby Street. You know that sent that sent my father com completely bonkers. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's your I'm, Mike. It's your Mike Darbo phase. That is. That is. <laughs> I've, I've, 
what's yeah. the yeah. elephant I'm chords? Not, actually, it's a bit of Dave D, the centre party. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Not that I'm particularly proud. But did you, you know, ever have? We, we were talking about it the other day whether the great coach is making a comeback. You must have had a great coach, Jonathan. Did I did. You have a great, yes. yeah. and, and did an you buy it from Lawrence Corner? In London? <laughs> yes, Lawrence Corner. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> yes, and 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 an Afghan coat. Actually, they both got stolen in a, in a car that I had at the time. Um, but yeah, the, yes, great coats. So you went to the? Do you tell me you went to the first Glastonbury or the second one? Yes, I did. I was. Gosh, what a memory! I went to. I went to Glastonbury um, 71. Right. Um, which which was um, I was the first time I saw David Bowie. I, I actually spoke to David about it. I mean, he they were they went on late. I mean, yeah. not on late. They, they missed their slot. And I can remember waking up at like five o'clock in the morning. And there was David Bowie on stage doing an acoustic set with a joint about this long, um, and 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 it was just astonishing. I, I was familiar with him. I do have a I do have a dress cover, as I'm sure you, but you know you both have. Um, but uh, but my, my, my real my real claim to fame is is I was a massive Traffic fan. I mean, absolutely adored Traffic. And um, so I think we I sort of went with some university mates and actually during traffic set. And, you know, do you know who filmed a Glastonbury Fair? Well, it's David, David Putt, Nick Rogue and David Nick Putt, Rogue, yeah. exactly. Who, who then did, you know, who then went on to do Man Who, who Man Who Fell to Earth. So there's a moment in Gimme Some or Loving when I am idiot dancing. Oh, what, I've, I've seen that clip that's so many all times. on the internet, boys and girls. <laughs> no. And that's all on so, the so, um. So yeah, actually, I do, I, I do have a picture of me and, and Michael Evis um, taken down at the Brit School when he was when he was when he was honoured down there because I'm I'm a trustee at the Brit School. He he, he said it was quite he, it was it was he said the seventy one one was odd, but it, I I just had a, I had a fabulous time. So I'm sort of beginning to grow up, getting you know long hair and doing and having having all that completely unmusical um i spent three years at kent university um doing the things that university students should do spending far too much money on records um and and buying the music buying the music papers and you know i graduate in the three-day week this and all all i know i ever want to do is write about music that's all i ever want to do and if you remember rock yeah you were a rock, 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 rock yeah i've got a copy that's it. There we go. Charlie so you, so you oh. want to, and Ryan, it says, so you want to be a rock and roll writer, and then it says underneath, keep a carbon. That's right. Can you see, you yeah. can see that? I it's can't in, read in, that. I can remember bracket. that, Jonathan. I can yeah. remember that. Yeah. I read the print of that couple of pages. Oh, that, well, that. So so then I, I graduate in 73 actually looking back i realize how how sort of quickly i kind of got to things um so i then i then i I come come kind of driving a van i'm doing supply teaching i'm just and i'm writing reviews and i send i and i send in a review amongst many i bought this album on on him on import right um you know that lovely lovely thick card that kids wouldn't know and uh, and then i got uh, i got a i must have got a call or something from simon frith who at the time was writing for let it rock and my review appeared and that album appeared in in the january 74 let it rock wow and and you know as, as you both know once you sort of get your foot in the door um are you were the office boy when you or something? I, I, the- well, I then I then put my hat. I mean, the Let It Rock. Oh, and by the way, the Paul, the the the, the I totally wide because I saw you did Paul the other day. What a book! What a fantastic book on the history. Uh, Paul Gorman's book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah um, actually, I must get in touch and tell him how good it is because let, let It Rock does. He gives Let It Rock a really lovely write up. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm desperate to get into uh, desperate to get into the business. So I do. I write some more pieces for Let It Rock. Um, I sort of become. I put my hand up. The, the, you know, the the, the the magazine initially failed and then became a sort of cooperative. And you know, you know what it's like. I mean, I sort of then go. I'm invited to their meetings with people like you know, with Simon Frith and Dave Lang and Carl Dallas and 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 you know, loads of other great writers. And, and I mean, I'm like, I feel like a kid at school. You know, I'm absolutely crapping myself with nerves. 
But um, then, uh, I, you know, I get sort of more stuff published. And then I hear through a guy called Mick Houghton, who I know you no, know, we know, we know very, well. very well. Mick yeah. Houghton, and this was my kind of real break, told me that CBS were looking for a house writer. Right. Um, and John Tobler at the time was head of press at, at, at CBS. So he, he he brings me in. Was he head of press? John? It's hard to believe, John. I know. We know yeah, yeah, I think John. I was just a rock That's critic. hard to believe. It, it, I just can't see him on the telephone scaring up publicity. <laughs> John anyway. Tobler did all the press for ABBA at Waterloo when they won Europe. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing. So that's the man, the man from Zigzag, basically, did yes. ABBA's yeah. press. Yes, that's, that's right. incredible. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so then, your job was to what? To write press releases, presumably. No, was it? basically. And here's my, here's my. It was a sort of little, yeah, press releases and. I used to send it. It used to go out to sort of dealers and stuff yeah. like that. I don't know if you can see that. Can't yeah, really read Johnny it, Mattis. It was, several, it was several pages long. Where it says surprises in Peckham, that was when Jeff Beck, who was on Epic, turned up at some small gig in, in Peckham. Can you can you see that? Yeah, we can. Yeah, so yeah. That, so that's that's April the 18th. <clears throat> that's April the 18th, 1975. And that then is kind of when... I mean, you know, you both know me. I'm sort of, you know, quite a gregarious person. You know, you just get to know people because that's what you've just got to do in this business. And, you know, there was Ellie Smith was there, who yeah, yeah. I learned yeah. a lot from. And eventually they said to me, do you fancy becoming a, a, a press officer? And by then, you know, as, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm musical. I mean, I realised that I, I mean, I'd interviewed... Quite a lot of people, but I'm realizing, you know what, it is the Frank Zappa thing. Writing about music is like dancing about architecture. There's no, there's no, this is not a life. I, I got married, so I put my hand up. And so that then is when I become a press officer at CBS. And, and I mean, literally, you know, like. And who were the acts you were looking after then? Well, it, it was lovely because we just mixed. It was just a sort of real mix and match of people. I mean, I can remember almost like a. Five days later, I'm I'm kind of I'm in a meeting with Bill Graham and Carlos Santana, and I'm thinking, I've died and gone to heaven. I yeah. mean, you know, no one ever told me at school, Jonathan Morris, I know the job for you, music yeah. business. Yeah. So it and you know it was just it was just fantastic. I mean, we just had we just had a whole array of array of artists from you know one day you'd be answering the phone call to about Tammy Wynette, then I'd be taking calls about, you know, the only ones, what a great band, you know, wonderful. It, it was just, it was just, it was, it was, it was just wonderful. Um, and, and, and yeah, we should probably, what was it? I, I mean, that was in the days, presumably, just give us a flavor of press officers in those days. So when are we talking about late seventies? or something? We're to, No, we're, we're, we're talking, we're basically talking about, um, we're talking about 70, we're talking about 76, 77, so, so I always got the impression when you turned up a record company uh, press offices in those days, loads of people just used to come in and hang about because they they either didn't have anywhere to live or they didn't have anywhere with a phone. Yeah, or, or, or they or wanted they, to get. They want to use the records. photocopier and they want to get free <laughs> records. Exactly. But 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 you know that I mean Ellie was really close with the Clash. The Clash used to come in every day in 77, 76. Yeah. I mean, it was it was you're right. It was it was mad. It was a kind of, you know, you'd have Nick Kent stumbling in because he'd lost some records. So, you know, the cupboard would open and the and the vinyl and the vinyl would come out. I mean, it was it was just wonderful. I mean, it those, was, those, it those was things... Liberty all. It's even it's interesting. Even even a few years later, those famous pictures of Bob Geldof organizing live live aid in the phonogram press office yeah, because he didn't have a phone. On a landline. He didn't <laughs> he have a phone. to go in there. You know. the, 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 the wonderful story Bernard tells about that. Yeah, they all came. That's right, isn't it? Because then no one else had a, had a, had a speaker phone. It, you know, we had, you know, we had the kind of facilities and you know what it was like. It was like, well, hang on, let's do a trip to America. <laughs> and then you and then you'd wind up sending it now and now i'm gonna go in but let story. me stop you there the trip to america was often if you you'd ring somebody up and say would you like to interview xtc at the the marquee club in wardour street and they go no no not really i'm a bit busy you say, how about in texas and for a week <laughs> you know That's suddenly right. it was and a we, we, so, three page spread so my my first trip to america when i took um Phil McNeil, who'd also been oh, on right. the yeah. Rock, yeah, yeah, and then had moved over to the NME. 
and um I I um it was basically to take the enemy to do Boston. Now this wasn't a necessary good match. And and of course, if you did one interview, you always had to do about three three or four more to get value to get your value. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So let so, me guess, who were the other acts that, that they really that they were forced to, to talk to? <laughs> no, well, they wouldn't want to see Boston. But Boston no, 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 would well, pay for no, it. And actually, the other thing, because because I'd interviewed, he was the only act that I actually interviewed and then did press for, was Billy Joel. Um, so, and, and I actually did the press for The Stranger, which was fantastic. So, so this is this is seventy seven. Billy Billy hasn't put out. So, so Phil McNeil of the Enemy goes. We take him out to do Boston and and, and Billy and Billy Joel, which did eventually get in, but not particularly favourably. But my Boston story was lovely because this is the fastest selling album that, C that, that CBS Records, had, I think, still have ever put out. Yeah, yeah. And we, we go up somewhere north. It's, it's February. It's my first time in America. And we, we take a little plane out of, out of LaGuardia to go and see them. And we, we see them and it's great. And, but because they can no longer go on doing the touring in buses, They've got to be put on a plane, so we get up the following morning, and we're on the we're on the we're on the um we're on, we're you know there's Phil and me completely open. They're doing everything you can imagine. Um, we're we're on the we're on the bus with them, and then we're driving in the middle of nowhere, and we turn into this airfield, and this is like something out of Almost Famous. Yeah, and it is like just it. one of those magic moments that you get to see as a PR that sort of lovely side. And and so in what do they see? There is a plane. And this I'm sorry, this was from the enemy article because I don't have the original print. There is them. Oh, this is my photo. Can you see the cover of the and album? That, has that got yeah. that like, album on it? And this is the moment as a band, you <laughs> become so big that you've you got a plane. Made, got your own plane you with your name it. on the side. And yeah. It, it, it was it was just such it was just such a lovely lovely moment um so um so yeah so boston was one if 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 i sort of then maybe if i i mean you know it was mad i mean just because cbs was so successful i become i i, I they split the press offices out and i become head of of epic press with all the other labels that weren't cbs and columbia which sort of was lovely because we had so much more variety to work on you had meatloaf didn't you you, you had oh meatloaf my meatloaf oh gosh my meatloaf story um is <laughs> just very very quickly there's there's a picture can you see me and me and meatloaf together Oh yes, got you. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and these, and, and and actually, all credit here because Bat Out of Hell, um, you know, Bat Bat Out of Hell is, um, I think, the sell-in. You know, do you remember? Do you remember record companies used to have sell-ins? I think yeah, the sell-in yeah. sell for for Bat Out of Hell was something like two and a half thousand. Yes. But we had a product manager, a guy called Frank Brunger, who's sadly dead. And success, you know, as many fathers in this business as we know. Um, Frank should take absolute all credit for, for, for because Meatloaf really broke here. I mean, the yeah, video got oh, yeah, broke by old grey whistle test. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly on old grey whistle test. And <laughs> but here's here's another here's here's a, I mean typical corny corny record company activities. So so what do you, you've got a, you've got someone called Meatloaf. What do you send out to journalists? Oh no, 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 please. Uh, and you said it out second class post. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but it gets worse than that, of course. Oh, we, we Lord. Send, we send out meatloafs. And there was a guy writing to the Daily Express called Garth Pierce who phones up about a week later to say, I've only just recovered from food poisoning. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding? No. Well, now there'll be a legal action, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I or mean, you no, get a really good story out of it. And, poisoned and we, by meatloaf. We, yeah. And and we and we 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 we'd probably we'd probably all get sued as well. Yeah, so, absolutely. So I, I'm I and then then other egregiously corny things that record companies that record companies did. So the Beach Boys came 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 um came to CBS and um, as you probably remember did Nebworth in 1980. Mm -hmm. And I, for some reason, and it, don't, it doesn't quite tally with what I've looked up anyway. I mean, this is this is. This is one of my proudest photos, actually. There are other people in it before I show it, but we go down, we go, to, we go down to, to that hotel where 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 Brian is staying, 
and and for, I think it, to give him a birthday cake. Now, guys, can you guess what was on the birthday cake? No, go on. Something involving surfing? No, it couldn't. You, Mark Allen, you've got it in one. God, but the, the man mean, who what, what, the man who never poor served. Old, poor old Brian. You know, as I mean. And he doesn't need more cake at that point. No, no. So there's me just sort of hovering over Brian's shoulder. But to have a picture with all three love brothers is actually quite, quite, is that good? It is. is Okay. Is, 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 you know, is just, um, is, you know, is, is, is lovely. That's gorgeous. Um, so, you can imagine that's that's the kind of picture that would end up in Music Week, wouldn't it? Sharing a, sharing a joke. And and some cake with the Beach Boys is Jonathan Morris, head of press. <laughs> Epic. But those, you know those those are those are the sort of things things that we did. And I'm now sort of just kind of um, I'm just sort of riff, riffing around a bit now. Um, we should I, I, I go on. Go on. Tell us about your experience of working with Michael Jackson. Okay, because so... there was the thing where you a, a, a Daily Mirror competition winner. Wasn't it? Yes. Isn't that right? Okay, so I, I well, I first meet Michael in 1977. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, it was the Queen's Jubilee. That's that was that. that so was, before Off the Wall. It was before. Yeah. Oh yeah, long yeah. Before two off, years. Two before, years. Yeah. I mean, Ellie Smith said to me, Jonathan, I want you to look after the Jacksons. Um, and. You know, basically, they when they left Motown, they couldn't use the Jackson Five name. They they became they became the Jacksons, and um, it was just lovely. We we sort of kind of developed a relationship, and and not long after the Boston trip, I took Alf Martin. Do you remember Alf Martin? Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. the editor of Record Mirror. Yeah. So, so this was like, my first job. We, we 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 this this was this was. Um, this was we thought the editor of Record Mirror. Uh, we he should come out. We should give him the good record company treatment. So so the first interview that Alf Martin ever does as a journalist really? is, with Michael, is with Michael Jackson. Astonishing. So, so this is nineteen seventy seven. That's on the set of the Wiz. That's a great picture. That taken by our the late lovely Mike Putland. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who you know? Who was a fabulous guy? So Alf, Alf interviews Alf interviews um, Michael, and it was one of those kind of whistle stop. Let's get him into everybody. And and I remember I was a massive fan of of, of a woman called Carla Bonoff. Oh yeah, so yeah. He interviews Carla Bonoff. We fly up and he interviews Cheap Trick. Um, <laughs> I can't remember who else we would we would have thrown in. Um, but then just sort of yeah, I kind of develop this it it was lovely michael yeah i mean so let yeah the thriller the thriller competition um which which was which was i mean look you, you start prompted this this whole conversation really of why why we why we're here today and we did have a big playback for for um for thriller in in the basement at soho which, square which neil, he, neil tennant had gone to had from neil smash heads, yeah, gone to. Yeah. and my memory is neil was the only person that gave the album a great review so, <laughs> yeah i think that's so, true so in february the daily mirror runs a competition to meet michael jackson uh over in california those but, are the days but, but, yeah. but as often happened with 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 um you know, with um, Michael, managers changed, and I mean, you know, this is run in a paper, so so I'm like hustling it for it to happen. And around August, I get a call from the American office saying, "You need to be in San Diego in a week's time with your competition winners." So to cut to the chase, we're there, and and um, it, it was actually it was the hotel where they filmed some like it hot. It was fabulous. Oh right! So, so Frank DeLeo, who's head of Epic at the time, promotion has got all his promo guys together. You know, this is this is this is 1983. Thriller. Terrifying Frank DeLeo, with no doubt some very terrifying promotion some mafia hoods. Yeah, he, right. He's, he's, he's certainly he, I pockets. certainly have my moments with him, but yeah. um, but you know that's what you want from a good manager. You want that drive. You want that loyalty. I think those are really important determining factors of what makes a good manager. So anyway, we well, you uh, won't be frightening, so you can let the pop star be nice. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, bad bad cop, good cop. Thing. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I mean, you know, he's got his promo guys there, and 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 I've got these two competition winners, and and finally, 
it's I'm, I'm come on when is this going to happen when is this going to happen and it's and it's midnight I get the call and I mean I, I you know I knew Michael so that wasn't a problem so and he's he's you know he's got a lot of he's got a lot of people I mean he, there was a woman you may not have come across her called Shirley Brooks who's miss who was Miss International credited on the back of Thriller she's there and um anyway we're ushered in and he, Michael was you know he was so generous with his time I mean here is you know thriller as i say going through the roof august august 83 and we we say our goodbyes and and they're just the two competition winners are just about to leave the room and he says what are you doing on tuesday and no one can quite believe what he's going to say next and he says i'd like to invite you up to encino and i mean this is can you imagine a pop star today so, I mean, this is the generosity of spirit that Michael had. They couldn't make it, actually. But, but, I, but I, go, I, go, I go up there and... and um, this is pre-Netherlands, uh, isn't it? Netherlands. It's pre-Netherlands, it's, it's, it's yeah. It's the place, I think there's still a few animals and there was a yeah, yes. oh, yeah, wait, cinema wait, and all wait that. For yeah. the, wait for the next picture. He's, he's certainly got animals. So, so, in fact, I go up there. The, da the Daily Mirror journalist is still out there. So, so we rock up at the house Um. And, and Michael says, you know, look, I've, I've got I've got some things to do, but just do anything you like, you know. So I, I've got there, I've got pictures of me. I, I actually run out of cine film in, in the in the house. Can you imagine pre video? But so so we then get the tour of the house, and and at the time, um, at the time he's got um, he has got animals. So we go into the trophy room. Who's who's fast asleep in the trophy room? But his muscles, the boa constrictor. Yeah, boa constrictor. Yeah. Oh God, God! There's a boa constrictor. Oh my lord, that's corner. brilliant! Can you see that? Okay. Oh, good God! So, so I mean, look, no one, no. I mean, we're all like going no, and I'm thinking, I, someone's got to put themselves forward to have muscles put around his neck, and you know that that you, person, you were that man. Uh, and I obviously was that man. And Michael said, "Look, don't worry. He's he's had his live rap for the not day. in my pay grade." So, so, yeah. so, so, so he he can't. You know, he won't he won't he won't he won't kind of he won't kind of he won't kind of strangle you or do or do or do anything or do anything you know like that. And it was it was just fabulous. And then and then actually he was he was recording at the time. He was recording the Victory album with his brothers and and. And I've got a hire car and he's got to go off to the studio. And he says, do you want to come to the studio? So he and Shirley get into this into this brown brown Rolls Royce and he's driving. And I say to him, Michael, don't forget, I don't know where I'm going. So I'm going to have to follow you. So you have and five minutes down the road. He's completely forgotten that Jonathan Morris is following him in his car. Tearing along by. I can go through about three red lights to follow keep, that brown roller. keep up with him. But again... You know, it's just it's just, you know, a, a kind of, um, you know, fantastic little th th those moments where you, knew, you know, you, you get to know people. I think as a press officer, you, it, if you understand the person, you, you're actually you can do, you know, you can you can do a sort of much, much, you know, you can do a, a better job. Um, and, and, you know, Michael was just he was just, a, you know, he was just a sort of fantastic guy. I mean. So, um, so I, I kind of have the idea of let's do, as you, you, you know, the cover of, stat, of, of history, that's the year history comes out. In fact, a piece of point of sale material right. from, oh, from, yeah. from the day. Um, didn't and, didn't and, the statue go up the Thames on a yeah, bar? Like, like, no, that, that's, that's where I'm at. Well, initially, my plan was to get it into Leicester Square, but dealing with Westminster Council was a, was a, was a nightmare. So you wanted to move a giant statue of Michael Jackson... Into Leicester Square. Into Leicester yes. Square. Solely for yes. promotional purposes, and amazingly, they said no. <laughs> and, and the amazing, bastards! They, but, but, because you see, where, now, what, the way the world's changed is, and I was thinking about this last night, um, that was that pre-internet. What did you do? How could you would do a stunt? A stunt? That the nine o'clock and ten o'clock news we could carry. not do. Yeah. So the cost was paid for, and I had a fabulous boss. I mean, Paul Russell, to whom I owe a lot, and he was the one back in '92 who said, "Look, Jonathan, I need you to go out on the road with Michael. Um, this is this is this is the beginning of the age of." 
Pepsi sponsorship. I mean, I, it was fascinating. But, you know, he's our recording artist. So I want you to be out there on the road the whole time and make sure he does things for us. That was when I really developed my relationship with Michael. But just coming back to 95, we're flitting around a bit. So I somebody says, well, why don't you try the water authorities? Do I try the water authorities? Yeah. Um, so, look, I'm thinking of floating this 35 metre high statue of Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, we'll open if you want to do that and bring it down, we'll open the bridge for you. No problem at all. Wow, so, so Tower bridge. bridge. That's, That's fantastic. fantastic. So, so, so the whole this is extraordinary. So on the on the day, I mean, I'm, I mean, this is, you know, you do have fabulous moments, but you do have ones that you have to have underpants for. And I'm, I'm in a barge, the, 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 the west side of the bridge. And it's all kind of finely, it's all finely timed. Actually, before that, I should just say the making of it was was um, uh, uh, one of my colleagues, Richard Ogden, who you, who you may oh, know. Oh, yeah. I managed by Mac a while. I was Saw him the only the other week, didn't yeah. we? we did. oh, okay. Working with, with him on this. He knew um, the guy that had done... Um, who'd worked with Pink Floyd on the animals. Because I think the statue and animals are probably the biggest point of sale material ever done. Yeah, in the yeah, of yeah. Music. And Robbie knew the guys that had worked on Raiders of the Lost Ark. So um, they're the guys and they are literally working off a design no more than this. I mean, I am, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I'm the one that has to sign off on, on the statue. How much did it cost? How much did it cost? Uh, it was about we did about well what we did was we did about seven or eight of them it was about it was about a quarter of a million which when you think of the coverage that we got all around Europe completely pays for itself absolutely because once you've made one you might once you've made one you might as well you might as well make you might as well make a lot My, Michael loved it but uh, it, to this day I, I, I it look they did a, they did a brilliant job but anyway the, the statue the statue is coming down the Thames and I'm thinking hang on it's low tide. <laughs> it's the, are they going to open the bridge? And there was a moment, I have about three minutes of literally, please, please, when the bridge starts to go up, um, then, then that I'm would have been an even better publicity. Michael Jackson beheaded <laughs> going underneath the bridge. And, and if you, I, I, again, I, Kelvin, do you remember Kelvin McKenzie? This is the beginning. Yeah, of, yeah the sun. So Kelvin McKenzie had just started live TV three days before the, right, yeah, yeah. before the statue goes down the Thames. They cover the whole thing. I mean, this is like watching the football results come through on the teleprinter back in the 60s. You know, it's about as interesting as watching, you know, whatever. They cover yeah. So here is the moment. Wow. There's me and oh, the that's wonderful. Uh, with, the, with the bridge opening, the statue in the background, Richard and, and, and another guy next to me called called John Duncan. But but, you know, that that was that was, you know, we, we, we it was just fabulous. But but we, we could kind of um, we could kind of do those. We could kind of do that. So you, you haven't got the statue in your lockup. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I know. laughs> no. Where is it? Um, it so, must still exist. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I suppose yes, somewhere. Um, It'll be in a warehouse, like as in the end of Raiders well, of the Lost yeah, Ark. Here. No, Michael, my, Michael did, did love. Michael did love. You know, the, 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 his, he did. He, he collected loads of things. He loved. You know, he loved awards, and he loved. You know, I used to sort of give him. He was a fabulous guy to be around. I mean, I would. We, we. we I mean, I, I'd, I'd literally have sort of conversations with him, talking about sort of the evolution of man and then you know i was a massive robin hood fan so i'm sending him stuff like you know you know the dick james you know the, the, the right. Richard green and and so you know you, he was just he was just a he was just a really interesting guy guy to be so how much of that kind of uh you know childhood magic thing that he seemed to turn on for interviews was was real how much of that was an act well Mark, I, I kind of always, I always kind of attribute, I always kind of attribute this to you that that um, I think the younger you become famous, that that the, I'm sure you wrote it, um, and and oh, yeah. I read that you know it does become increasingly difficult to you know to sort of grow, um, and 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 Michael. You know, Michael was a was. I mean, you know, when God gives out talent, he takes something else away. You know, you're never quite of this world you know creativity comes from from a strange place yeah um, and and you know i was very lucky you know i kind of met you know michael 
he was he was a lovely guy and i i must i must come on i mustn't forget the, you know my, my my dear daughter to whom he really really took a liking to i mean michael never dedicated songs um really to anybody and 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 on the 92 tour he's chatting to my daughter backstage and i always say to michael look when you have children you're gonna have to send them to school because that's the way you know you you've sort of got to be you you know you've got to be you know make them part you know part of the, the real world and 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 Mimi my daughter was telling him she was just about to go off to boarding school and he couldn't believe this this whole concept of boarding school so we leave the backstage area and um one of the security guys says could you just write your daughter's name down on a piece of paper so anyway Mimi and I I'd do that and we go in well, actually it was fabulous because I always used to watch the show from the photographer's pit and I'm there and at the end of the second song, he, there was always a little bit of a pause. And he says, I now want to dedicate this next song to Mimi Morish and just did this beautiful thing. And that's that's the bit of the man that I will always remember. I mean, Mimi, you know, he just dedicated this song. No, no one could believe it. I actually have a recording of it. I mean, Mimi, Mimi gave him a, 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 a what do you give Michael Jackson on his birthday? I mean, you know, he 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 he. Gave, she gave him uh, uh, one of those friendship bracelets. He was still wearing it a year later. Oh, nice. And I mean, it, it goes back to that thing of inviting the fans back mm. to his house. This sort of generosity of spirit, um, I think, is is something. And I realise, you know, while I work, gosh, we haven't even got onto, you know, Wham and Sade. You know, you developed, a, you know, the different kind of relationship. Michael was really famous when I knew him, when I first got to know him. Um, but, you know, he just had this sort of generosity of spirit. And, and I mean, you know, maybe I should move on, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you want to, uh, to, to another Michael Jackson story. Um, well, should we do that? Yeah. Um, when, when I, I mean, it is, it is, the, mad, it is the maddest week, weekend of, of, of my life. Um, and uh, so I'm just about to go home and I, and I, and I, get, I get a call and, and I'm needed in... He wants me to come out to Germany. So I get up the following morning and he's about to announce some charity shows um, on, on a TV <clears throat> TV show in Germany called Wettendas, which means bet that biggest, biggest show in, in Europe, watched by 30 million people. I was always a bit against doing it that way. I can I can remember that. So anyway, I get on a plane to frankfurt and and Vettendass used to get filmed in in you know it, it, it was all it would travel around germany this would be like you know michael jackson visiting i don't know totness or somewhere <laughs> so so um so we all get we, we we all troop off to the to the town where it's being filmed and i, I wasn't in the, i wasn't in his people carry i was with with some other people going there i remember that really well Anyway, we go into his dressing room. He eventually comes in. And unlike him, he wasn't in a very good mood. And he sort of asks, who's, who's got me to do this? And I'm thinking, I'm not going to say. Not I'm, me, I'm, mate. I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to. Anyway, he then says, I'll only do this if I can see Jonathan Morris behind the camera. And I'm thinking, hang on, Michael, what, what are you up to? So he says, that's the only way I'm going to do this interview. So, um, I, I, I mean, this is like two hours before, and it goes out live. So, it, you know, the, the security guy that I was really close to, you know what he's going to do, don't you? And I said, yes, I know what I'm, he's going to do. So, so Michael, um, the moment comes for Michael to to it, his bit in the show, and, and it was hosted. It's actually all on YouTube, this. Um, hosted by a guy called Thomas Gottschalk, who was lovely. So Michael, absolutely, in his brilliant way, kind of, you know, works the audience, um, sits down in, in his chair and Thomas Gottschalk says, um, well, you, Michael, you know, you're here to announce these two charity shows um, for the Nelson Mandela Foundation. He looks around, he can see me behind the camera. Jonathan. So our, I, I mean, I'm expecting to, I'm wondering what I'm going to do this that, that weekend. But my whole, you know, uh, and suddenly I find myself on live, German TV in front of 30 million people explaining that he's doing these two charity shows. One was in Munich and the other was in, in Seoul for, for the Nelson Mandela Foundation. 
so I do that bit, get through it. And actually, I, going back, uh, I, I travel with him. And he then says, um, I want you, I want, we're off to Cape Town tomorrow. I want you to come. And I'm thinking, well, hang on, I'm not, I, I, I'm going to have to go back to London. So I phone my boss, Paul Russell, and I put Michael on the phone. He wants me to go to Cape Town. Jonathan, not a problem. So Sunday evening, I, fl- I go back home, fly, fly, get to Cape Town on, on, on Monday morning. And he's going to do a press conference with Nelson Mandela to announce, you know, to pro- announce this on South African TV. So I'm dealing with all Nelson Mandela's people. I mean, you know, the, this, is, this is the thing when you work with Michael Jackson, you know, the, the, the worlds that open, the worlds that open up to you. And so um, Michael then arrives and, and he says to me about midnight on Monday, well, where's my speech? And, and I, I mean, he has no manager with him at the time. So... I, I set my alarm clock and you know like four o'clock and this was in the I had a fax machine in my hotel room and I knew the way his mind worked I wrote two speeches one was long one was short faxed it to myself in the room knocked on his door at sort of nine o'clock ten o'clock which one you know it's too long but but Michael the long one is better than the short one okay so we go we then basically to cut a long story short we go up to the presidential mansion and and you can probably guess the photo that I'm now going to show you because oh, you know this this is you know oh good grief I mean I I, I kind of you know these, these, these things have to I mean you know this is when I realised you how, made sure you had a photographer Jonathan all the very time good. No, I, well, I, was, never, one of, one I was building guys. to this very moment all the time <laughs> I, I I I had to do it but I I'm. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, they are moments, and I know, you know, you, you know, all the, you know, the PRs of, of, of our day, and, and, you know, we, we've all been blessed working around, yeah, seeing that sort of, you know, that sort of stardom factor, um, and, and, you know, he was just so lovely. He invited, you know, I've got, I mean, I've got all my laminates here, um, yeah. and, 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 you know, because they're, they're, they're sort of really pressured possessions, and actually. He was he was really keen to invite me and Michael out. He did he did his thirty five years in the industry in at Madison Square Gardens, so he invites me and Mimi out, um, and um, so we get on the plane September the tenth two thousand and one, and you know where this is. Right, go on, yeah. Go so um, so here he, actually here is my artist pass from that gig. Madison okay. Square Gardens. I'm not sure you can see the date, but take my word for it. Um, anyway, well, you were there on September 10th. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so. Um, so it's the day before. Day no, before. This is the night before. This is the night before. Oh, wow. So, so I actually have. It, it, it's, it's, it's. I've, I've, I've kind of kept it because I actually have a New York cab chip dated 9/11. We got back to the hotel. You know, one's knackered. We've left that morning. And it was we get late. back to the hotel yeah. at ten past midnight. And 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 um, I sort of go to the front desk. We're, we're, literally, this was like a thirty-six hour visit for me and her. And um, uh, I go to the front desk and I say, "Look, could you tell me where Abercrombie and Fitch is?" Because by then they were only open in New York. And she said to me, "Have you not heard the word? Have you not heard oh, really? what's happened?" Oh, Lord. And I have to say, Dave Hogan was. You, you know, we all know Dave Hogan. Yeah, yeah, for Dave you. Hogan um, was out there at, at the time, and 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 it was just. It was horrible. I mean, we you know we were stuck there for five days. Thank oh, you. Would be yeah. With, with the power with the power of Sony with the power of Sony behind us, um, you know we 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 um, we we were able to get a relatively early flight out. But I have to say, it was one of the one of the you know walking down walking down Madison Avenue. Um, oh gosh, Mad- David Madison Avenue man, Greg Kinn, going what a. <laughs> What a <laughs> song! I could never walk down Madison Avenue without, without thinking that without ever singing that song. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh, but and but walking down it with no cars or anything. This was this was one of the bizarrest, bizarrest, surreal moments you know in 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 my life. Um, okay. And and yeah, but it was you know it was just such a lovely gesture again of of, of Michael to to you know to to, to invite you know, kind of me, me and, and, and her out, out, out together. Um, 
and and yeah i mean i was just very lucky you know i went i went around you know i mean i literally went around i went around the, you know the world with him um so that's um that's michael jackson that's the very that's the very top of the record business that is michael yes, jackson post I, I, I do post I do, thriller. Look, I do actually have here is my acetate of thriller well cut, cut, hello ebay cut. Can you see that? Okay, cut cuttings. They always give a, they always give off a lovely smell. Acetate. Yeah. I don't. Oh. don't do, do you? Do you remember? You know, I the, love the uh, smell of acetates in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but it is early in the morning. Jonathan, yeah. so, Jonathan, so, wait, you know, wait, it is, it is, it is. As, yeah. as, you know, look, it's, it's. it's We're going to have to wind John up. Lennon. Lennon. <laughs> John well, Lennon. Think... Sorry, it's John no. Lennon's toppermost of the poppermost. You know, and when yeah. you've been there with. You know, and as I say, we really haven't talked about. You know, I went to Ch Wham in China. You know, we'll it, do it, that. We'll do we'll that do a part on another two. occasion because yeah. that is the perfect place to leave that. So the, uh, we are with, on the top of the, the mountain with the acetate of thriller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, it's been a delight to talk to you. Word in your attic: A Zoom with a view.